I was recently in Boston with my family because one of us, I won't say who, managed to get tickets for the Taylor Swift concert. It is an absolutely amazing city with incredible architecture, tall buildings, new buildings, old buildings, and buildings full of curious things. While this person who was not me attended the Swifty celebration, I celebrated in my own way at the Boston Science Museum. I won that one hands down. The Museum of Science is a science museum and indoor zoo in Boston, Massachusetts, located in Science Park, a plot of land spanning the Charles River. Along with 700 or more interactive exhibits, the museum features a number of live presentations throughout the building every day, along with shows at the Charles Hayden Planetarium and the Mugar Omni Theater, the only domed IMAX screen in New England. Although it was an amazing day of discovery, I was there to see one thing the electrical demonstration. So this machine, the machine on display, is the star of the museum's theater of electricity. And Dr. Robert J. Vandegraaff, a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, built it in the early 1930s to power the university's particle accelerator. Since it retired from its duties of helping the bright minds of the 20th century research high-energy X-rays and atom smashing, the generator spends its time sparking curiosity and wonder among the audiences who attend its daily shows. Van de Graaff generators use an internal moving belt to produce an electric charge. The ones this one uses are over four feet wide, and it is three stories tall. Uh, the belts it employs use friction to generate electricity the same way a science teacher would, by rubbing a balloon on top of someone's head to make their hair stand up, except on a much larger scale. A large Van de Graaff generator can make an electric charge strong enough to shoot bolts of lightning and even power particle accelerators. I'm going to end the narration here and leave the rest to the expert who not only gave us an incredible show, but taught hundreds of young minds about Nikola Tesla, wireless electricity, and how to make it. Because this is what American Benjamin Franklin looked like, arguably the most famous type of all of history, because it changed the way he was thought about lightning. Negative. All right, amazing. And this negative charge actually moves around. It can go from one atom to the next atom to the next atom. But it doesn't, they don't move randomly. They're moved by something. And we have a name for that something. It is called the electric force. Now, in physics, forces are anything that push or pull. And our electric force does both. It will pull opposite charges together. So if everyone wants to try to make a negative 
negative charge and a positive charge. Those are going to get pulled together. Amazing. And if you have two of the same charges, you can pick which ones. The electric force is going to push those apart. All right. Now, this is, this is where we get the phrase opposites attract, likes repel. A lot of times people are talking about love, but it's also true for the electric force. All right. And electricity is simply created anytime these electric charges move around. So knowing that that's what electricity is, knowing that lightning was a form of electricity, who thinks that electricity is loud and bright? Put them in the wall. That's how they gain all those moving charges, all that electricity. But there was a scientist named Nikola Tesla, and he had this vision for wireless electricity. So let me show you what he had in mind. I'm going to zoom down my legs. And on the sides of the stage are one of his inventions, the Tesla coil. All right. Now, I've got a light bulb in my hand. Not plugged into anything. So when I bring up to this Tesla coil,
maybe you had driven to like the beach or park in their auto village. Where'd you go? Yeah, in your car. Now, who knows why your car is safe? Test this. 